Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Danielle uh, Bahoro, and I am an ACPE certified educator. And I'm here uh, joining you again two weeks later after our first webinar session uh, together. This is part two of our webinar session entitled, Can You Hear Me Now? Supervising CPE students in an age of Black Lives Matter. I'm excited uh, to have you all with me here again uh, today. I want to direct your attention to the ACPE website. If you go on to the ACPE website and click on the link that says uh, resources and look for this webinar uh, presentation, you will see my PowerPoint presentation that I'm going to be working from today, as well as you will see the first video of our first time together if you missed it and were unable to attend live or if you wanted to watch it again. So feel free uh, to uh, log on to the ACP website and check I apologize. I am so sorry. I was, uh, my internet failed. Uh, I'm on my work internet at Advocate Healthcare. So I apologize. My, my internet kicked me off. Uh, so let me continue. I'm going to uh, get into the meat of our presentation uh, today. And so I was saying that I'm going to uh, invite you to check out the PowerPoint that I'm working from today as well as if you want to view the first video from our first time together, which was two weeks ago, you can look at that or view that from the ACP website. Uh, Carl Jones Reed, our phenomenal uh, digi specialist here has posted a link in the Zoom webinar chat to uh, the ACPE website where you can specifically see my PowerPoint and see the first video. So just log on uh, to your, your uh, Zoom webinar chat and you'll find the link there. All right, okay, let's get started. Part two of this presentation is giving what I call the meat of, of uh, my model. The meat of, our, of my model is entitled HEART, it's an acronym, H-E-A-R-T. I hope you have some uh, pen and paper. I hope you have some pen and paper available. H-E-R-T, and it is what I call a prophetic model of CPE supervision in an age of 
Black Lives Matter. And so I'm going to spend some time now during this second half of this presentation uh, talking about that. First and foremost, how do we work with students uh, during this time of Black Lives Matter? I say stage one is to hear and listen. In my heart acronym, the H stands for hear and listen. What do I mean by that? First and foremost, uh, I believe that it is important for CPE supervisors or ACPE certified educators to create safe space. I am going to invite you to think about what strategies do you incorporate to create safe space? Whatever those strategies are, I say first and foremost, uh, please implement them and facilitate them. Second, we hear and listen by bringing current sociological issues from outside the hospital learning context into the CPE learning environment. What do I mean by that? Most of the time, we say that our learning together in CPE is based on the clinical method of learning, meaning what students gather from visiting patients in the clinical setting is where most of their learning comes from. But in my model, I propose that it's important not only to examine what's happening in the patient care encounters, but also what's happening in the world around us. I believe that we need to better connect the dots in our reflection time in CPE to also thinking about and reflecting on what's going on in our current world outside of the clinical environment. I believe that the clinical environment is impacted by what is going on in our outside world. And so my belief is as much time as we spend going over verbatims and ministry reflection moments based on patient encounters or client encounters, it's just as important to spend that much time talking about our current sociological context in our community and in our larger society. And so I say there are two opportunities where we can lay uh, some uh, time period to discuss what's going on in our greater society. The first opportunity takes place uh, during the, what I call the CPE check-in time. During a group session, as the session begins, we have check-in time for persons to debrief about their feelings. Reverend Asafo Ata names uh, six feelings that all persons experience. Sad, mad, scared, peaceful, joyful, powerful. And so we give students and the supervisor an opportunity to check in and name their feelings. And I believe it is during that time when we can have students debrief about their feelings about what's going on in our greater society. I also believe our second opportunity takes place during our IPR time. Most of the time, when we have IPR time, we're talking about relationships in four areas. Our relationships with our patients, our relationships with mission and spiritual care department staff, and our relationships with our peer group, and fourth, our relationships with the CPE certified educator. But I propose in my model that we add a fifth component. And that is speaking about relationships in the greater society. It is during our check-in time and during our IPR time when we can create space for students to debrief about how are they feeling given 
whatever sociological issues are going on in the greater society. So let me give you some examples. I believe that the ACPE certified educator can generate some conversations about this by asking people some reflective questions in the peer group. For example, during check-in time or during IPR time, a CPE supervisor can ask, what are you feeling or how are you feeling about a recent headlining racial discrimination case? So for example, in light of the Starbucks incident, a certified educator could pose to the peer group, did you hear about the recent Starbucks incident? How are you feeling about that? Or if there is another case of a recent police brutality incident, the certified educator can pose that question. Did you hear about this incident? How are you feeling about this incident? By asking these reflective questions, an opportunity is given for the persons of color, in particular the African-American students, to feel as if the CPE supervisor or educated, educator is connected to their struggle of what they are experiencing in the larger society. As I said earlier in my first presentation two weeks ago, we are starting to see growing trends of post-traumatic stress disorder that many African Americans are experiencing by living in this current climate of racial injustice, hate, and bigotry. And so if we have African American students that are coming to our CPE groups in particular, struggling with the impact of PTSD, we have to give space for them to share about that and connect with them in that process. In this way, this builds trust. The CPE student who is a person of African and African-American descent will feel and experience trust from the certified educator by the certified educator creating opportunities for them to debrief about recent police brutality incidences or recent headlining racial discrimination incidences. A third question that persons can uh, reflect on at the invitation of the certified educator is what are personal stories and experiences of racism that in particular, the persons of color in the peer group have experienced. Giving an opportunity for the persons of color CPE students to debrief about their own experiences of racism further helps CPE students of African and African American descent feel listened to and heard, further creating trust in the CPE learning context. Another example is there have been a recent new phenomenon of white people calling the police on black people engaged in daily non-threatening activities, i.e. doing nothing but simply existing. Another example is a certified educator could pose to the CP group during check-in time or during IPR time. How are you feeling as these incidences continue to occur? All of these all of these opportunities uh, for reflection garner trust and allow the certified educator to then begin to offer particular education around a particular CPE students has all strengths and growing edges moving forward in the learning context. African American students in particular may feel will feel as if their CPE supervisor or certified educator connects with them. Therefore, when the certified educator needs to share pertinent information 
about their pastoral strengths and drawing edges, their pastoral identity, their pastoral competency, that particular African-American students or students will be more receptive to hear that and take that in because a trusting relationship has been established. Next, stage two in my heart model is what I call the E and the A, meaning empathize and acknowledge. After the CPE student or CPE students of color or African and African descent name particular personal experiences of racism that they have experienced or begin to talk about their feelings of racial headlining uh, discriminations, headlining racial discriminations. I believe that it is important for the educator to empathize and acknowledge these events. It's not enough just to name the pain of experiencing a racially discriminatory event. It's important for the certified educator to empathize and acknowledge this pain. What do I mean when I say empathize? Oh, one of my frustrations is Hallmark. Hallmark makes millions and millions of dollars creating cards that say, I sympathize uh, with your loss. Sympathy means to feel sorry for, but empathy means to feel connected to. CPE students of African and African-American descent don't need sympathy. They don't need us to feel sorry for them. They need empathy, which is something different. Empathy means to connect with. Brene Brown has a wonderful video that's a two to five, that's two to five minutes on what is empathy. And you can find that video on YouTube. I invite you to Google it. It's by Brene Brown, B-R-E-N-E, and Brown, B-R-O-W-N. If you're looking for wonderful strategies to teach empathy and how to be empathic. And so I propose in my heart model that a certified educator extend empathy by saying such statements as, wow, I can't imagine what you may be experiencing after going through such a traumatic event of this police brutality or racial discrimination. Wow. It sounds like this was very tough. I also want to acknowledge that it is real and it did happen. The A in my heart mat model is for acknowledge. Acknowledge meaning don't make excuses and then turn the event into judgment where we are now asking questions to the particular students of color who are sharing their stories, asking them, is there anything that they could have done to deserve this event? But acknowledge that racism does exist. Acknowledge that this event that they experienced or this recent headlining racial discrimination event speaks to larger sociological isms that exist in our world today. There are moments in the CPE learning environment where sometimes we push back on students uh, to make them reflect on their actions and how maybe their actions contributed to their plight. Doing this is very dangerous when we're talking about empathizing and acknowledging racial discriminations that a student may have experienced or racial discriminations that a student may have witnessed 
going on in our current world. And so I say we need to uh, resist that type of supervisory strategy in these moments. Another method for empathizing and acknowledging police brutality and racial discriminations that further builds trust with African-American students in particular, I believe is to do didactics or seminars on three important moments in our history. When I say our history, I mean United States slash American history. One is African enslavement. Two is the Jim Crow time period. And three is mass incarceration. These three historical moments are very important and very meaningful in the life of African American students. And so in this empathy and acknowledgement phase, it's not only important to empathize and acknowledge the current statistics of police brutality, the current incidences of racial discrimination that may occur, uh, but it's also important to talk about the past history of oppression against African Americans in particular. And so I invite CPE educators to further build trust in the learning context with African American CPE students to give didactics or seminars on, again, African enslavement, Jim Crow, and uh, mass incarceration. You may also want to add a didactic around uh, the civil rights movement. Again, the purpose of doing these didactics on these three or four pivotal time periods in our United States history is to again help the certified educator connect with and empathize with the African and African American CPE students to build trust in the supervisory relationship so that when the certified educator begins to confront, challenge, bring to light, bring to awareness that student's pastoral strengths, growing edges, pastoral identity, pastoral competency, the African and African American CP student will feel more receptive and less defensive and less resistant uh, to hearing that. So let me give an example. A certified educator may want to consider if they don't feel comfortable feeling as if they're knowledgeable enough of Jim Crow laws and mass incarceration and African enslavement, what would it be like to organize a field trip to see a movie, for example, about these particular issues? What would it look like to bring in a speaker in African American studies at your local university or college to come in and facilitate a seminar workshop or didactic? Let me give another example. The most recent movie uh, out now that speaks about police brutality that I think is a wonderful CPE movie for persons uh, to engage in. And I invite certified educators to organize a field trip around this movie, for example, is a new movie starring David Diggs entitled Blind Spotting. What would it look like to take your CPE group to see that movie Blind Spotting, which highlights the post traumatic stress disorder tendencies that arise in an African American male as a result of witnessing a police brutality act? A current didactic that you might want to feature in your CPE group is. The Naya Wilson story. Naya Wilson 
about a week ago was unfortunately stabbed to death in California on the Bay Area Rapid Transit, otherwise known as BART uh, train system, by a European American gentleman. Naya Wilson was African American, 18 year old teenager, just graduating from high school. And uh, this Naya Wilson uh, story is the most recent uh, story about victimization and racial discrimination and violence done to an African American person. Uh, that is a major headline in our news right now. What would it look like to do a didactic about her story? Again, and if you don't feel comfortable bringing someone else in uh, to do a didactic on her story. What would it look like? I invite CPE educators to also organize a field trip to African American History Museum. You have the African American uh, History uh, Museum in Washington, D.C. You also have the Civil Rights Museum uh, in uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. If you were in the Atlanta, Georgia area, you also have wonderful civil rights museums and the home of Martin Luther King uh, Jr. Uh, in Atlanta. That would be wonderful field trip opportunities that again, create empathy and acknowledge racial discriminations and pains that African-American students uh, have experienced. I also invite you on my PowerPoint, I also have a link to a YouTube video that mentions 10 evil experiments conducted on African Americans. Another didactic that I invite certified educators to bring to the forefront in their CPE program is thinking about the impact of racial discriminations in the healthcare system. This becomes very important to talk about, in particular for CPE centers that are operating in healthcare institutions. There is a YouTube video link in my PowerPoint presentation. Again, the title is 10 Evil Experiments Conducted on African Americans. So we look at, for example, one evil experiment conducted on African Americans is the Tuskegee Airmen Experiment where a group of 150 African-American men were injected with syphilis in Alabama and were not told that they were injected with syphilis so that then researchers could then study the effects or outcomes of syphilis on their bodies. Another evil experiment also includes the gentleman we call as the father of gynecology, J. Marion Sims. J. Marion Sims is known for conducting several, several, several uh, vaginal and gyne studies on African slaves in the 17 and 1800s without medicines or anesthesia uh, during these research studies. Recently, last year, a statue of him in New York City was uh, taken down as more light uh, and attention has come to his unauthorized gyneco um, gynecology studies on African uh, slave uh, women. And so there are tons of other uh, experiments conducted on African Americans that you will see that this link talks about. Margaret Thatcher, the founder of Planned Parenthood, is known for saying that initially she wanted Planned Parenthood to only offer abortions to African American persons to now decrease the African and African American population in the United States. Did you know that about Planned Parenthood? To find out more in other experiments, please check out uh, that link. What would it look like to offer a didactic uh, on that? I want to now spend some more time, about 15 more minutes, 
and then uh, I'm going to open up our conversation. Um, I'm going to open up our conversation for some Q&A. I want to spend some time giving you uh, two sample didactics. Again, you will find these didactics in my PowerPoint on the ACPE link. Again, uh, our phenomenal, uh, I want to call him our digi pastor, our phenomenal digital specialist, uh, Carl Jones Reed, posted the link uh, to my PowerPoint in the Zoom webinar chat. Feel free to check that out. Let me give you two additional sample didactics. One sample didactic that you could also give uh, to your students is what I call examining what is a threat. What is a threat? And I use the Dylan Roof confession video, which again, you'll see a link to that in my PowerPoint. I give the Dylan Roof uh, confession video as an example to that. For all of those who don't know, Dylan Roof was the gentleman who walked into a South Carolina AME church during Bible study one night in 2015 and murdered nine black churchgoers because he believed in his confession video, and this is a quote, black people kill white people every day and black men rape 100 white women every day. What is a threat? I've offered a sample didactic on this in that a certified educator could get into wonderful reflective questions on how do we understand threats? A threat is a feeling that one will experience danger to his or her survival as a result of another person's actions. But what we tend to not understand about a threat is a, threat, a threatening feeling can either be real, and by real we mean based on unbiased historical data, or a threatening feeling can be fake based on illogical paranoia. And so an example of talking about a threat is one could look at the Dylan Roof confession video, where this gentleman cites these statistics that are not real. And that based on him saying he felt threatened by African Americans who are in particular killing white people and black men, African American men who are raping 100 white women every day, he then decides to retaliate against this threat by unfortunately murdering nine African-American AME churchgoers. We could get into some wonderful conversations, thinking about and reflecting on threatening feelings and parallel process, thinking about are the threats that we experience based on unbiased historical data or based on bias, illogical parano paranoia. That's an example, I believe, of a didactic that we could talk about that also takes into consideration empathizing as well as acknowledging police brutality as well as violence against African Americans that builds trust with our African American uh, students so that our African-American students are more willing, more able, more capable to hear us when we share pertinent information and education and learning about their pastoral strengths and growing edges, about their pastoral identity and pastoral competence. Another didactic that I invite educators to think about in trying to understand how to talk about racism and connect with their persons of color, uh, CP students, is what I like to call the Trayvon Martin Toolkit. The Trayvon Martin Toolkit can be accessed from a website entitled uh, www.blacklivesmatter.com forward slash resources. Again, 
Uh, that website is www.blacklivesmatter.com forward slash resources. What would it look like to talk about Trayvon Martin, a gentleman who I spoke about earlier in my first presentation two weeks ago? By going through this uh, toolkit that would make for a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful didactic. Now, the R in this heart model stands for reflection and response. What do we do now after we've offered these didactics on racism, police brutality, uh, current racial discriminations that students may experience, and uh, talking about headlining events of racial discrimination going on in our society today. I believe that after empathizing and acknowledging these events, both current and past events of racial oppression in the United States, for example, the Civil Rights Movement, Jim Crow laws in the South, and our current mass incarceration rates, it's important to invite the students to reflection and response. It's not enough just to hear and listen. It's not enough just to empathize and acknowledge. It's important now to have reflection and response. What do I mean by reflection and response? I mean, how can we empower all of the students in this peer group, not just the African-American students, to reflect on ways in which they can contribute to current social justice work and diversity efforts. Creating space for persons to either reflect in the peer group meetings or write a reflective paper on what are they, call, what are they believing the divine is calling them to be and do in light of these current and maybe historical oppressions uh, that exist. So, for example, how do we get uh, CPE students to think about civic duty and justice in the wider community and society? Most of the time, the goal in CPE learning is to help CPE students discern their pastoral identity and discern their pastoral competence. But I push back and challenge that to say in this model, how do we add to that inviting and empowering CPE students to think about their pastoral identity and pastoral competency in light of racism, sexism, homophobia, classism, and other types of discriminations in our world today. I push back and invite CPE certified uh, educators to think about CPE students' pastoral identity and competency as larger than what they do in the hospital context as chaplains or what they do in the parish context as pastors, elders, bishops, imams. Uh, and really think about how they're contributing in their ministry to the greater society. And so I believe that we can uh, spearhead these reflective opportunities or reflective questions uh, through also organizing field trips during the CPE learning to, let's say, a social justice organization. I invite certified educators to think about uh, taking their students to a field trip to your local Black Lives Matter chapter headquarters in your city, or your local, your local urban league, or your local national action network that's uh, operated by uh, Reverend Al Sharpton. Those are some examples that will allow CPE students, all of them, both African-Americans and non-African-Americans, to be thinking about what should be their response 
greater than just the ministry context as pastor or a chaplain or pastoral counselor or pastoral therapist. Also, I would invite CPE educators to think about how do we create CPE programs that are centered around justice work. So for example, let me be honest with you for a moment. What would it look like? I'm sorry, let me pause for a second. The Planned Parenthood person is Margaret uh, Sanger. I said Margaret Thatcher. I apologize. Oh, I'm so sorry. Margaret Sanger. I apologize. Thank you. Uh, thank you. What would it look like uh, for uh, persons to do a CPE program where their uh, clinical hours could be done in a social justice organization, such as the National Action Network or the Night Ministry, or uh, um, a social service center of some sort that allow CP students to also think about their own sense of humanity and advocacy in justice work. I'm going to be honest with you. Many CP students are now expanding their mindset around what ministry is. Ministry is larger than chaplaincy. Ministry is larger than pastoring. Many CP students are coming to us feeling called to work in counseling, feeling called to work in uh, professional counseling or mental health therapy, feeling called to even work in politics or even feeling called to work in social justice. And so what would it look like for us to organize CPE programming in non-hospital or non-church uh, settings? that may give persons an opportunity to reflect and respond on uh, what the divine is calling them to be and do in light of the isms uh, that exist in the world today. And last but not least, as I wrap up, the T in uh, the heart model represents uh, thank you. So the H is for hearing and listening, the E is for empathizing, the A, is for acknowledging and the R is for reflection and response, but the T is to say thank you. I believe that all persons in our CPE learning uh, group need affirmation and empowerment. And so I believe after we have reflected on current and past uh, instances of oppression, in particular racial oppression, after we have facilitated didactics on various racial discriminations, after we have attended field trips uh, and watched movies and, and visited some social service uh, organizations and African American museums, for example, it is so important to affirm CPE students wrestling with this. This is not easy work. And so we don't take for granted CP students' willingness to participate uh, in this process. How do we speak and demonstrate affirmation and empowerment uh, for CP students' invaluable commitment to work towards wrestling for a just society? And so parallel process, I want to thank uh, ACPE, and I want to thank you for attending this uh, two-part webinar series because you, by your, by your participation today, are wrestling uh, with how do we make our CPE learning environment even a just society uh, to address oppression, in particular uh, racial uh, oppression. So I appreciate even you as certified educators attending these sessions wrestling uh, with how to make your CPE program a trusting and open learning environment for persons of color uh, in the CPE learning. Thank you, thank you, thank you uh, so much. Um, 
in the interest of time now, that concludes my presentation and my PowerPoint. Uh, again, I want to create space now for uh, question and answers. And so I'm going to look at uh, the question and answers, I mean, the, the questions that have been posted in our uh, discussion board. And I'm going to invite you, if you have a question or a comment, to simply uh, write that in the uh, Q&A uh, icon that's on the bottom of your uh, screen. Uh, we have uh, uh, two questions that have been posted uh, thus far. Uh, first of all, let me say thank you, uh, Sarah Sweeney and uh, Susan uh, Conrad. I think that uh, uh, it is important as we uh, facilitate didactics, for example, on racism, police brutality, uh, racial discriminations. I do think it is important. Uh, for uh, persons to have African American lecturers <laughs> giving uh, these workshops. Uh, but at the same time, I do believe that it is important for non African Americans to also be able to give these, uh, these lectures and workshops. Uh, because what I wouldn't want to happen is I wouldn't want uh, non African American certified educators to uh, believe that it's someone else's job to do the work. I believe that it's all of our jobs. Uh, it's all of our jobs to do the work. Parallel process. Uh, sometimes uh, I have a student say, oh, I am Baptist. And there's a patient who is Church of God in Christ. Let me look for my peer who's Church of God in Christ to minister to this Baptist patient, and I'll respond by saying, no, uh, I'm gonna invite you to also minister uh, to this patient. So I don't necessarily believe that uh, didactic on racism and racial discrimination necessarily has to be done by only uh, uh, African or African-American or a person of color uh, certified, uh, certified educator. O.T. Schmidt uh, has raised a uh, wonderful, uh, wonderful perspective uh, that I would invite you to uh, also uh, think about. There's an interesting and valuable article in the current edition of The Atlantic entitled, Being Black in America Can Take Years Off of Your Life. And uh, uh, you're invited to uh, check that out. Again, it's entitled Being Black in America Can Take Years um, uh, Off of Your Life. We invite you uh, to check that out. If you wouldn't mind, uh, Uti Schmidt, uh, please, if you wouldn't mind posting maybe a link uh, to that article in the Zoom uh, webinar chat. That would be great. Uh, we have another uh, we have another comment from uh, my director uh, Janet McLean. Uh, when talking about racism, uh, not only uh, I include not only when a racist act has been perpetrated, but when someone might have seen the act and or they were the perpetrators of the act to add into the discussion. Uh, this then allows all to participate in the discussion, discussion and share feelings about it. Yes, 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 yes. That's very, 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 uh, that's very important. That's very, very important. Any other comments or questions? All right. Well, let me say uh, thank you so much uh, for this opportunity. I want to uh, direct your attention to a couple of uh to a couple of websites uh www.blackcarematters.com www.blackcarematters.com 
I am in the process of publishing an edited anthology that will help us look at uh, pastoral care strategies and interventions in particular uh, for African Americans in light of a current Black Lives Matter moment uh, that we are currently living in. So I invite you to check that out. Thank you so much, Uti Schmidt, uh, for posting the link to that article, Being Black in America Can Take Years Off Your Life. He, uh, that has been posted in the Zoom webinar chat. I want to also invite you to uh, check out Facebook. Uh, there's a Facebook page uh, that I've created where I also drop wonderful, useful articles that you could uh, garner, uh, didactic, uh, create didactics from. Uh, the Facebook page is called uh, At Black Care Matters. So feel free to check that out and like that page on Facebook. Again, it's called At Black Care Matters. Uh, check that out. I want to also invite you to the Journal of Supervision and Reflective Practice has an article that I wrote that basically this, this, this two-part webinar presentation is based on. Uh, and so if you wanna go to the current Journal of Reflective Practice and check that out, you can. It's called the Journal of Reflective Practice, Formation and Supervision and Ministry. The Journal of Reflective Practice, Formation and Supervision and Ministry. And the title of the article is, uh, from trauma, uh, transforming trauma to trust, transforming trauma to trust, a prophetic model of CP supervision in the age of Black Lives Matter. Uh, we have one more uh, question from uh, Susan uh, Conrad. She says, uh, can we talk about what it means to be trauma informed as a certified educator in terms of the trauma of racism and what we need to be aware of in doing individual and group uh, supervision differently. I'm assuming that trauma related to racism is continuing, not just one incident. Uh, yes, I believe that uh, one could learn about that uh, through a variety of ways. Uh, first, I want to invite you to uh, psychologytoday.com, the American Psychological Association has done a number of articles on how our current police brutality age that we're living in, our current uh, hate and racism and bigotry that is being incited by our president number uh, 45, has created PTSD in many African Americans. And so uh, there are tons of articles that the APA has published on that site. So all you have to do is log on to www.psychologytoday.com, look at the small search engine box, and uh, you can type in the following words, police brutality and PTSD in African Americans. And you'll see tons of articles that will be generated from that. Again, it's police brutality, I mean, uh, PTSD in, uh, in African Americans uh, and something around police brutality. PTSD, police brutality, African Americans. Naming those three, word, uh, those three uh, themes in this search engine uh, will generate uh, these articles. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much uh, for uh, this opportunity uh, to, to speak with you. Uh, thank you so much for this opportunity uh, to speak with you. If you'd like to connect with me, uh, feel free to send me a friend request on Facebook. I'd love to uh, connect with you. Uh, also, if you want to email me and we can talk further, uh, you can email me in a couple of spaces and places. Uh, my name, danielle.bahoro at advocatehealth.com. Again, danielle. or period bahoro at advocatehealth.com. Uh, also, if you'd like to be on the list to receive a copy of uh, my book uh, coming out, 
Uh, it should be out in the spring of 2019. Uh, feel free to send me an email at blackcarematters at gmail.com. Again, that's uh, blackcarematters at gmail.com. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful, fantastic day.